The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, host of the Tiger Technicians Hour and author of the opening call, Daily Newsletter, very comprehensive newsletter. And uh, just to review, we're long from June the 3rd. Uh, the Dow, we've got a position the 200% long. And we've gone <laughs> everywhere you counted. This is a peak C at 26,966. Why do I mention that? In the Chapman Wave methodology, you go from the lowest, most identifiable low. Sometimes very easy to identify, and other times it's not. And you count each higher peak, and this becomes a peak A when it turns around. If it doesn't take out the low, it continues. And if it goes higher than that peak A by 0 0.001, whatever it is, just one penny or even less, just goes higher. It starts new leg B. That's called a floating letter. becomes a floating letter until it actually makes a peak. And then it goes back uh, up again. One penny above B, it starts leg C. And same thing with D, one penny above C. <clears throat> At D, the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. That's what you've got to know because you can recycle and go to a whole E, F, and G or even recycle to a whole brand new buy mode. But D is really where you lift your foot off the accelerator and you say, okay, let's see what's happening next. You don't have to do anything, but you're just ready. Patterns that we look for, straight line, up and down, that's one. Arch formation could be an inverted V. You're going from one side up and then testing that left side now support. Or you're going from one level down and coming back up again. You're testing that. So there's just three patterns, straight up and down, the arch or the cup. And then you can get mixed the two, but it's still basically the same thing. On the left side of the dreaded H, if you take out the left side low, you can keep going down quite sharply. And on the right, the Y inverted Y or upside down H, take out the left side high, and you can keep going high, or that's where you make a double top. All right, so here we go. Where are we? We're looking at a cup formation that made a little cup and rising handle. A cup. And rising out. In the Chapman Wave methodology, when you decisively take out the left side high, now you took it out, it wasn't all that depth that's decisive. It means that you should go to a D. But this is a rising cup, and there's a little handle pattern, one of my favorites. Now I can make another little cup and handle mini, and we'll see if that's going to happen. Why? Okay, now I'm going to get a little technical for those of you who do Chapman Wave methodology. Let me just show you something. That peak B at 26,907 on the 21st of June pulls back to the nine period exponential moving average, the, the, the green line. And then it rallies, but it rallies to just under 26,907. It goes to 26,890. So it misses it by 17 points, 18 points going to a new high. Um, but there's a technique that I've used only rarely, but it is part of the vernacular. It's not like I'm form fitting that I'm trying to make things up. I'm saying because of a number of factors, I could technically call this a phantom peak, make it red, even though it's below B, everything about it with a little bump in the on balance volume, everything says that that had a legitimate call to make it a, a C. And then we would be at a D. Why do I say that's important at 26,966? Because the S&P the S&P has gone to a D. It did make a higher high on that day that the, the Dow made a flag. That was Boeing. So Boeing might have disrupted this whole thing. That's why I've been saying to the subscribers, we took a tiny little bit of, uh, tiny little bit off again um, the other day, uh, yesterday, or day before. Uh, took a tiny bit off. Why? Because you've got your peak D. Remember peak D is where other things can happen? You've got your D in the S&P, but the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, is still good, and the stochastic is very good at 90%. The reason why I wanted to stay long, and the uh, QQQ, the NDX 100 trading vehicle, went to a peak E. 
and now it's pulled back for three days. But there's one tiny little red thing yesterday. So it's really, it's, it's defying the, the weakness that you could normally see. It's trying to ho hold very nicely and rally. So that's the reason I wanted everything in sync. So that gave me a legitimate excuse to say, there is a chance that I could, could have called that a, a, like a phantom peak D the other day. I don't need to do it because all the technicals are suggesting that there's still enough residual strength to try to get close to that level. And if not, we'll make a decision about that. So, and here we are looking even today with the market open down very sharply. We've already made in the uh, two minute chart, we made a peak F. In the, in the five, five minutes, we've gone to peak E, and we're only at a peak C in the 10 minutes, trying very hard to get in the E mini back to the high of the day, which is a 29.79.50. And it's a 29.78.75 right now. It should try for that. All right. So where are we? <clears throat> we've done that with the indices. Now let me just show you something in the weekly charts. This is a leg D, probably, it could be a peak B, D if there's no new high above 191.44 this week in the queues. But so far, this D has got good, not great, but good back D. And good, but not great stochastic at 85%, lower than it was at that peak C at 191.32. And that's the reason why this Friday's close is going to be very important. The S&P weekly chart has actually extended a little bit more. It's in an E. A, B, C, right there on the, uh, I think, the third, yep, the third, week of the third of May at 29.54.13. And then it comes back down and has another series of up moves, breaks out and goes to a D and then an E. Monthly chart is still only in an A with a potential of some kind of July um, topping process and an August pullback. That's, that's the potential right now that we're looking at. We'll see. And the QQQ month, a weekly chart has gone to a leg D, but it's only a B in the monthly chart. And the Dow is more extended than any of the others. And that's really a major part is because of Boeing's weakness. And look at this. You've gone to uh, 26,966 all-time high above the high of October of 26,951, just modestly somewhat 15 points. And then you've gone above the high of 20, 26,616 in January of 2018. All of, this, all of this is saying to me, be a little careful. The monthly chart looks fabulous looking out, but on a short to term basis, the daily and the weekly chart are saying, uh-oh, starting to bump into some kind of resistance. But what would you do? Let's just go to, um, I don't know, let's go to Merck. I haven't looked at Merck for a couple of days. Uh, Merck trading recycled EFG. Let's call this an, a G right now. In the Chapman wave, just gone sequentially higher to an F and then a G. Now pulling back. And that corresponds to weekly uh, brand new leg C and a monthly leg C. So, um, uh, MRK, Merck Inc., monthly chart, making this big. Look at this. You won't believe it when I squeeze this close. Look at this. Look at that cup formation. It's more like a bowl formation. And it's suggesting that the 9150 of November of 2011, the high, all time high at that time, plunging down to the 20 level and now up uh, four times higher at 84.99 should go at some point towards the 91s to retest the all-time high. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dallas down 85. I'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So I had a question, uh, Peek in the Den mentioned OSTK, and that is overstock.com. A lot of bad news about a month or so ago, and it goes all the way down from the 24s to under 10. It goes to 9. In fact, what it goes, it goes to... Uh, 8.96, the week of the 7th of June. Since then, and the data has gone peak, A peak, B peak, C peak, D. I looked at it the other day, uh, peak in the den, asked about it. I said, it looks good. Um, but let's see how it handles the peak D. Well, not only did it handle the peak D, it broke out this morning. I looked at it because um, I saw it go by in the ticker. I thought, oh, oh man, look at it. And it's now up $1.28 at 17.92 in leg E. But I didn't want to give it to subscribers as a buy because it's so close to the 200 period moving average. But the technicals are really good. This kind of pattern can go for a little bit. So I'm a little upset because I think that it's got a really good cushion in the 1610 to 1580 level on a very short term basis. However, uh, it's really gotten away, and it's it's, it's looking very, uh, very strong. Um, question about that. So, yes, uh, the monthly chart is horrible. Weekly chart has improved a lot, and it's only in a leg A. So if any pullback over the next three weeks does not take out the 14 to 13 and a half level, this isn't a single leg A up. It is a leg A, and it could pull back and then start leg B. So let's see how, it, uh, how everything unfolds. It could be a short squeeze. It has more the look of buying than just a short squeeze. So we'll see. A um, couple of questions I had here. One is, uh, the next question is, the cryptocurrency, BT, see, I mean, uh, GBTC, trading at 16.16, up 43 cents. Hey, nice move from the 12s just five days ago into the 16, up 30% well, just now in a, in a couple of days, going from 366 to the 1740 level. Pulling back to the 12, and now it's 16 points. Yeah, there is a lot of buying. And I had said, yes, it's in play. You know, this last move down, that gap down, uh, and then with an ugly candle intraday, going to the low of 11.99 uh, on the 2nd of, of uh, July. That was a good entry point. I didn't take it. I saw it. I looked at it. I just thought, you know, the MACD, if it does turn down sharply, it could go very quickly through to the low 11s. That's a big percentage when you're getting in at 12.20 and it goes down to 11. But, yeah, it's looking very good. So the answer is 
I think I can now draw this. I was going to do this before. I think I discussed it, but I never did it. The normal thing I would do is grab the two ends and say, there's a rectangle formation, and this thing could trade between the 17s and the 12s for a while still. Chop, chop, chop. I've missed a good entry point for the rebound. Now I think it's too late, even though from 16, 17, it could retest the 17s. I just risk reward wise. So this leg F, yeah, I'm going to do it here as well. I'm going to narrow the, the rectangle very soon. But just to start with, you go to the outer edges, and that's what we're looking at. Uh, and it's leg A in the, in the monthly. Yes, this is, looks like it's a little bit more than a short squeeze. Question about the VIX index, VIX. The VIX right now is trading up 0.08 at 14.04. I, I said to subscribers three days ago, I think the TVIX, that's what I usually put in my newsletter. We don't actually trade it very much at all. We used to do much more than I thought. You know what? It's just too difficult. Either you get it perfectly and then you do really well, or you miss it enough times to say, I did. I just lost as much as I could have made and really won fantastic moves. So I've just stayed away. We will buy it at some point, but I don't think just yet. And it's trading at 14 point, oh, the VIX is trading at 14.05. It's above, I would have normally just grabbed the two ends right here, made this rectangle formation. It went above, it's back inside. Make it real simple. If the VIX index starts to trade in the 15s, there's a good chance you're going to get a triple digit down in the Dow intraday. If it closes in the 16s, you'll get triple digit down closes. And let's just go for one step at a time. If it in the next two days, because you know, there's a, there, are a lot, there are a lot of, buys off the lows. Then the Dow's only down 90 points, let's just say. S&P's only down one and a half. This is not what you get in a major turnaround with a serious sell signal. That's the reason why I wanted to stay in our positions, our long positions, because I think there's just enough buying and enough hesitancy and, and queasiness to say, we're, this is a well-deserved breather, but I, at this point, I just think it's a breather. I'm not sure yet I can do anything more than that. So he has the VIX index at 14.06. If at any point it goes to 13.70s or lower, that's really going to give some buying pressure to the Dow. And if it holds in the 15s, that's going to be selling pressure. And right now we're at 14.06. Eh, no big deal. And a uh, question I had, yeah, oh, a couple of questions. Let me do it in, in sequence. Uh, I think this was the first one. Was this the first one or the second one? Paul wants to know, good day to you and Tommy. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Paul, this came in for our show that I did with Tommy O'Brien Jr. Um, in the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock hour, which I'm doing for Tom O'Brien, who's away this week. So I, I didn't see it until late. Uh, it came in at 20 past 10. I should have seen it. A question, good day to you, Tommy. Can you please review SOXC? Um, I like the setup here. Long entered at 145. So let me just go to the semiconductor ETF itself that's trading at 110. Am I doing this correctly? SOX, SOC, L. Wow. So SOXL. Yes, got it. Okay, good. Uh, you got into this at 140. Whoa, very good. 145 is trading right now at 148.07, up 2.90 on the day, up 2%. This is three times long, the semiconductor index. It's called the uh, uh, Direction Daily Semiconductor Bull, three times long. So let me say that the move down from the PD in the SMHs, let me just go to the SMHs because I'm going to use that as my route. Um, came in without going to the left side high of 107, the, the high that we use right over here of 117.88 from the 1st of May. Uh, it missed going there, and it pulled back for four sessions, and then today's a nice green session, right on the 14-period moving average again, and using that as a spin as a, a spin-off uh, trigger. I like this. The MACD is still good. That's why I can't put a down arrow in. The MACD is still good. The Castix is not so great. It's 62% on balance pulling back, pulling back. Okay. This is the way I would do it. So, Paul, you're in it. I'm going to say to you, let's now go back to your X, SOXL trading at 147.90. I, I don't know if you've got enough to do this, but what I would say to you is this. Your core position of 145, I would make that a 145.80. I'd even make it a 146 stop. 
a trading position for today or tomorrow says that I'd have a shorter term stop. I'm just going to go to the 120 minute chart, if you don't mind, right here. Um, 142.80. Of one, 147.90 trading right now, the 200 period moving average uh, support on the, this is near term. <sighs> 144.90. So you'd give up two points, about two points. No, it's three points. No, that's not good enough. You've got a really good gain so far, and it's really trying to turn up for a bounce. I don't think it's more than a bounce, and then it comes back and does an H pattern retest. Oh, I'm going to think this through. I, my, my eye has an absolute perfect visual of what I would use for security but I need to actually put that in numbers. I'll be right back down to 96. I was actually struggling to get, to get positive and the S&P almost did. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's down 91. And we're looking at the SOXL three times long, the uh, direction share semiconductor bull. Uh, it's trading at 148.10. So I'm just going to say, Paul, look, as it stands right now, I would have just a small part, of one third of my position would have a stop on the shorter term. Let's call it the near term position. 147.30 uh, on one position, 146.80 ish on another. And your core position, just make sure you don't take a loss on the core position. 
it, I, I looked at it early this morning because I know every day for my newsletter I have a, the SMHs and we were short uh, from 116 way down and we, we, we took profits and then just got out and I should have switched to long and said just take me where you want to go as an oversold bounce. I never did. So now I'm looking at it and saying yeah, this is interesting because the SMHs are getting close to a, almost like a new buy. I don't know if it's going to be after the next pullback or whether this is just holding long enough for people to say, you know what, I'm going to go back into this oversold condition of the SMHs. So, yeah, I like it. And in fact, if it works, if if today you're still in both in, in all the positions, you haven't even been taken out of one by the end of the day and tomorrow there's a gap up for whatever reason. Just proportionately raise those stops. That's all. Let it play out. I don't don't get excited. Just put it in, and if it gets taken out, it means the SMHs are probably going to have to do testing of the 108, 107s. But at this point, this is nice action, and I, I like it. And in fact, two last two days, it's had much better action than you would have expected. Next question I had was, whoa, am I going to? Yeah, QQQ. Um, I read your morning newsletter. You feel we will we uh, will soon consolidate on the queues. I have positions on TQQQ. Uh, do you suggest selling within another day? I have it in the 61. And it's at 65. Uh, thanks, Carlos. So, uh, Carlos, this is what I'm looking at here. The QQQ trading right now at 190.38 has held. Very nice. It's really had just a minor three days consolidation. It's almost like it has had all the way up. It's just three days. The fourth day gets ready for a move. Fifth day it breaks out. One, two, three, four. This was the seventh day it broke out, but it went kind of sideways. So I don't know if this is going to repeat, but the MACD is good, so there's no down arrow. The stochastic's at 91%, no down arrow. It's above the nine and the 14 period moving average in the daily. I like what I'm seeing. So, Carlos, I'm going to say, I'm going to do almost the same sort of thing because you've got the three times long, three times long. Uh, I don't have to tell you how quickly it moves. That's the reason why you've done so nicely so far. So the SQQQ is pulling back, but the uh, the TQQQ um, and it's SQQ looks like it could really test the low if it doesn't turn around in the next two days. Therefore, the TQQ says it could test the high if it doesn't turn around in the next two days. I like what I'm seeing. So here we go, 65.30. I would do this because you asked me this question based on my overview. Um, you know that I'm looking at the daily charts of the key indices having made tops that uh, suggest that there should be some kind of a pullback, maybe more time than anything else. I'm just looking at the NYA, just off the top of my head, I'm trying to think the NYA is trading right now. That's the New York Stock Exchange, very broad New York Stock Exchange. Yes, that did make a peak D. Yes, they're all doing the, sort of the same thing in terms of time rather than price. Here I go. In the L, in the TQQ, why is it not LQQ? Okay, in the TQQ trading at 65.33, have some part of it with a stop based on the 120 minute chart moving average is 65.34 that's where we are right here yes make it quite tight because it's done so well today that if it had to give back those 35 points that means the market is probably going to turn down quite sharply uh, and drag it down. So make that 64.99 oh somewhere around between 63.09 and 64.99 some part of it as a stop. I don't think uh, it, if it gets taken out, I don't think it's going to go much deeper than that. But the next part of it, I would have a stop of 64 point. You're in at 61. I don't want to give too much away. You've done so well. Yeah, 61.55. Give it a little bit of room. I can do this again tomorrow. The core position must have at least a one-point gain, at minimum, because you've done so well. You don't want to give a three times when you've been long at three times and done well in the three times long. That's an achievement in itself. So you don't want to give back. So that core position, I probably would say to you at this stage, 62, 30-ish, and I'd be out. I don't want to give back more than that. And if it goes higher after that, it goes higher, then you try to get back in. But that's the way I would look at it. Now, here's the big thing. I'd have a trading stop 
So it's a 65.36. The market is actually, now that Dow's only down 81, it's really, this is not bearish action. The market is really trying its best to move higher. That's the reason why we've kept our long positions. So I am going to say to you, 65.35, have a trading, have a 35 cent trading stop. So if it goes up 20 cents from here over the next to the end of the day into early tomorrow morning, you've got 20 cents extra than you would have in the stop itself. That's all. And just be very disciplined about it. You might be able to go even higher than that without being stopped out of even one position. This is showing some nice relative strength. Look, the technicals are all very good. Now, there's a difference between this chart here. Oh, I'll never remember what it was. Oh, man. What was it? I meant to write it down even to say, now that is a peak F because all the technicals are negative. All right, I haven't, I can't remember it. Um, in the meantime, back at the ranch, um, yes, back at the ranch, you've had Square. You know, I love the stock just the other day. And then I thought, uh oh, arch formation, just be careful. And then suddenly there must be some news here. Square, point of sale software, uh, and it helps you um, manage your receipts. It's trading at 78.10, up 4.68, and yesterday it closed at 73, uh, what was that, 73.06. Uh, that was the low, so it closed in the 73s. Now it's at 78.11. But this looks good, because it does look like that H pattern in the monthly chart is now improved, to say that there's a chance that it's going to go to leg B above 82.78. Doesn't have to happen right now. I like what I'm seeing. In fact, in the market itself, I'm kind of impressed that it hasn't taken a deeper uh, a dive to the downside. I like what I see. So, yes, yeah, Square's acting very well. So this is what I wanted to show you. For my subscribers, every day I go through all these different charts. So here's the Dow daily on the left. And here it is on the right with the MACD and the stochastic. The MACD is turning down, but it never went negative. And the stochastic is 80, um, 88%. That's very good. It did cross, uh, have a little cross of the uh, uh, green line, the near-term moving average. But so far, the, the, the boldness of the longer-term moving average is, I like that. And that's suggesting that the Dow has a chance to um, rally above the nine-period moving average and make another cup formation. Remember, what are we about in the Chapman methodology? These patterns, these arches, or in this case, cup, 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 you want to see that happen. Smaller and smaller is sometimes a, a big positive. Because look, yeah, there was a small one, and then a bigger one, and now you want a smaller one. So we'll see. Day's young, but it looks, this is nice action. So it'll be down 170, we're down just 70. So I, I am impressed with that. I'll be right back. That was a chapter title. The ignition is out. Also want to have a look to see what the Dow is dragging it down because Boeing is, is kind of almost unchanged. I'll be right back. Now that's it. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. All right, so what, I just wanted to show you something again. The two-minute chart at 29.79, the E-mini uh, a, B, C. So what we're looking at is in the weekly chart, remember I said we made that peak E, but in the 10-minute chart, we've only gone to a C and we need to go above uh, 29.79.50 to start a new leg D. We're right there at this moment. We haven't broken out above it. That'll be your D. Uh, but then the uh, five-minute chart is starting to improve. So that could keep rotating into the close today. And what I said for subscribers to my opening call, let me see, oh, I can't find it right now, is that if by 1.30 the Dow is, yeah, I don't know what I said. I, I mean, I, I remember I did it on different time frames, so I'm just trying to think of that particular one. Let me just see. Coming up right here is, coming up right here is, there it is. Okay, so the Dow... Got it right here. There it is. So the Dow daily. Yeah. Well. So I show these charts every day in my opening call newsletter uh, right here. And what did I say? If today, if at 120, that's another 35 minutes or so, the Dow is minus 35, down, now down minus 69. Minus 35 or less, the chance, chances increase for a rally to a positive later this afternoon. But if minus 80 is or lower, energy will be usurped and a weak close will be far more likely. And that's the pattern that I've discussed. And I've got it in the 120-minute chart with, the, with just the, the moving average, then with the MACD and stochastic, I do a different analysis, etc. cetera. So, um, and then for the stocks we have every day, if I can, I try to show the actual waveform and how we're structuring it and what we're looking at. Had a question from a, a subscriber about the Dow. Um, could it make a leg D? I just discussed that at the beginning of the show. I'm not sure if you heard it. And I said, because the Qs and the SPY and the NYA uh, have all gone to D or E and pulled back from here, there's a, there's a way that I can look at this to analyze it, knowing consciously that this is a peak C, but there is an alternative count with the formality that I have of the Chapman wave notation that the just miss right here, of, instead of going 26.908, it went to 26.890. This could be called the phantom C, and the MACD is turning down just after it made the real, uh, the phantom D that would be right now, 26.966. And the on-balance volume turned down. Stochastic's still good at 88%. And that's the reason I didn't want to get into any phantom anything. So I've called this peak C. I suspect we're going to get fairly close. And then I'm going to have to say, is this a peak C1, peak C1, peak C2, 
Chapman Wave double top formation. Either way, what happens this Friday is going to be important because this weekly at an E, if this E takes out the low of three weeks ago, 26,465, at any point in the next two weeks, this could be more than a short-term top. This could be a more short intermediate term top as the market digests big gains. And then all of a sudden, you get a whole bunch of things that become negative to the market. <coughs> I am anticipating that there's a lot of resistance that's down between 26,900 and 27,100. And that either way, even if we go to a new high, and that's what I said to subscribers, that's the reason why we took a little bit off the other day, is that even if we go to a new high, that's going to be probably where I'm starting to look for shorts. Because I think we're going to have a consolidation for this part of July, uh, starting in this particular second week of July. Probably going into the fourth week, maybe early August, I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm not talking about a big collapse, I'm just talking about another digestive phase. We had a move from 26,695 to 24,701, 2,000 points, 20, uh, 20, yeah, call it 2,000 points. Uh, we could have another 2,000 points or something like that. They're just important consolidations because these monthly charts, look at this, if the monthly chart eventually crosses positive in the MACD, that's going to be a big thing. And here we are on the Dow. So the Dow is late to the party here at a peak C, not getting to a D, but early in the monthly, already at a C, and the, the uh, QQQ is at a B, and the S&P is only in leg F slash A. F is very negative. Any moment you can expect a whopper of a move down below the low that was made in uh, June. Uh, but A says you get any pullback and you want to be buying the heck out of this thing because it should still go to a B, C, D, and E. That's kind of my thinking right now that this is an A. Just been a fabulous move from 2346 up to the most recent high of 3, 000, just over 3,000. So it's just time for a breather, that's all. All right. Now let's get back to our story. Question is, uh, 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 telecom, oh, Cisco, Cisco, here we go. Cisco for DG is acting nicely. It's a 5643 up 25 cents. Has made a peak D in the month, in the weekly chart and the monthly. I'm going to be conservative. I'm going to call this a D right now. It's a D slash B. I don't want to get too carried away. Let's call it a D, a D in the weekly chart, and uh, a B C. Only a C in the daily chart should go to a D. We'll see what happens. I could call that a G. I'll turn account. Yeah. So it's in the middle of a range. Um, I wouldn't be surprised here as well if Cisco takes a bit of a breather very soon. Little, a bit limited upside, and then limited downside, just stuck in a range. Could be a wide range, but a range nevertheless. Next question is uh, yeah, XLP. Oh, XLP. XLP is the Select Consumer Staple, uh, Spider Fund. Uh, it's the staples. It's got Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo. Oh, 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 we did that with Tommy a little earlier on. Look, XLP trading down 45 at 59.03. This is the defensive area. And in the defensive area, they're all-time highs. So if you're looking at Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola is just um, about two and a half points or so from its last peak D, uh, all-time high. And that was an F in the uh, weekly chart and only a C in the monthly chart. So that's still positive. A uh, Pepsi, we just got earnings today. Whoops, Pepsi right here. PEP, Pepsi trading at 131.17, down to $1.39. Possible peak F in the weekly, leg C only in the monthly. Uh, this is very unusual. The XLP doing so well in the defensive area when the market is at all-time highs or just about all-time highs. Fascinating uh, uh, what's going on. IYZ. I believe this is the telecom area. Yep, US iShares, telecom ETF, trading ABC in the uh, weekly. It hasn't got to the D yet. Only an A in the monthly, an ABCD in the daily. At 29.93, down a penny. 
uh, you know, this is also doing very nicely, and this is part of the dividend sector. So all I can say is that at 29.93, holding very well, um, it needs quite a bit to go to really break out into the 32s, but so far it's holding nice enough to say um, good action. I'll be right back for the last segment, Bowser Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. Uh, I'll be right back. That was on 77. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Uh, question someone asked, should I be worried about my XLY uh, exposure? That is the S&P Select Consumer Discretionary. No, it's at all-time highs. You remember, stocks and indexes, they go to new all-time highs, tend to continue doing that for a while. So don't ever get to just say because at an all-time high, the stock doesn't know that it's at an all-time high. You do, but it doesn't. So just look at it and say, I like it. If you're getting very nervous, take a little bit off. That's all. Take a little off and then assign it a place to get back in or just say, no, I, I, this is a huge move. I, I'm prepared to take off and not get in for a while. Just make a decision and then you'll be comfortable with that decision. Um, uh, the XLU, XLU is also kind of the same thing. XLU, oh. XLU is the S&P Select Utility Spider Fund, close to the same pattern, but a little different in that it's making this diamond pattern. So uh, at 60.61, I'm just going to repeat the same thing I just said. Indexes and stocks that make all-time highs, and this is like a point and a half away from an all-time high, tend to keep doing that until something changes dramatically. At this point, I don't see anything changing, but I tell you what I would do. I would be thinking of maybe lightening up just a little bit just start the lightening up position. Why? 
because it's really gone sideways. It hasn't been breaking to new highs all the time. It's just gone sideways with pops to the upside. So that's a little different at 60.61. Take a little bit off, nothing more than that. It's just more, more, more um, money management than anything else. Okay, a um, couple of things. My newsletter, the opening call, we've had some very good 16 to 20 percent uh, um, gains in certain stocks and indexes and certain things that we've done, taking a couple of small losses, actually lost um, just a little bit, and then the same things ran to the upside. Uh, it happens. Uh, what can I say? But we've had some very good, good position uh, uh, building, and this is for the intermediate term that we're really trying to build positions. And uh, I'll keep doing that because I think we've identified correctly areas of great importance in this particular phase of the market. So you can try my newsletter, the opening call, uh, for a month. It's a uh, money-back guarantee. Uh, this is a great time to be doing it because I'm looking for new positions and new situations over the next few days. So you'll be right in there for what we're doing. And um, have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom O'Brien. Oh, no, Tom's away, so I think Larry's doing his show. Tomorrow I'll be doing the show with Tommy in the morning at 10 a.m. and then Tom's show at 4 o'clock. Have a wonderful day. I hope to see you uh, tomorrow.